Hey, Mike. Um, so here's a quick demo about um, exporting stems from, in this case, the uh, 909 drum rack uh, project that you sent me. Um, there's a few little useful tidbits in here. The, the main purpose of all of this, you know, not just on the 909 drums, but also on the other elements of your track, is to um, end up with um, a, a, a stack of audio recordings um, that are exactly the same length, or at the very least start in exactly the same place so that I can take those audio tracks or audio recordings and throw them into Logic, because um, I want to work in Logic, um, and they will line up, and when I hit play, we're going to get basically the same thing. They're more or less, um, but without any of the kind of master or subgroup compression or EQ or limiting or any of that stuff. So I've turned off um, you know, any parallel compression and glue compression and all of that kind of stuff. I just want the individual sounds um, uh, uh, separated onto separate uh, recording channels. Um, so that's what I've set up here with these, um, uh, these, these tracks. Um, and so what I've done is I've just created a, a regular audio track with Control T and you get this audio track and you would name it something like Kick, I'll just Kick 2, uh, and then you point it to the correct um, source. So in this case, we're listening to the TR909 drum, drum rack instrument. And then below that, you have a choice of you know, what specifically you want to listen to. And in the case of drum racks, you can listen to each individual um, element. Now, um, I th see that you have maybe some duplicate um, cells in your drum rack. So uh, conveniently, uh, Ableton gives you a little graphical readout showing you which channel actually has some activity. Um, so we can see drum rack, snare drum, pre, post effect, post mixture. These are different sort of insert points that you can listen to. So I just wanted to listen to pre effects everywhere. So you set up pre effects and now we're getting the kick into this channel and then you would enable in for that audio to actually come through and back into the mix. Um, now I'll just delete this track because I already did it here. And I did it for every, every one of these different um, elements of your drums. And hopefully I got all of them. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, and then I've just, not that it actually matters in, for the purpose of exporting stems, but I've just muted the stereo group anyway, because they will still play out of this stereo group. I don't want to hear them. I want to hear the, each individual track. But we're going to be bouncing these out um, or exporting these out as separate audio files anyway. Um, I actually did this just a moment ago, but then had a problem with um, uh, with the screen recording software not showing everything that was going on. So I'm redoing this. Um, and over here, I bounced some stems, and they came out here. But I'm just going to delete these, uh, and we're going to do it again. So. Under uh, one, one other thing to note that I, is that I've set my loop region, and this will be what gets bounced. So I've set my loop region to give me one bar of pre-roll before anything starts, and then just you know um, a bunch of uh, another bar of post-roll at the end, just to be absolutely sure that we're capturing everything. So with those in and out points set, when you go to export audio video, you'll see that. <clears throat> the, that is already set up for you. Wait a minute, 4841 doesn't sound right to me. Uh, hmm. That should just be 4811. I'm confused about that. But it won't really matter because they will all line up. That's really the main issue. I feel like this should be 4811. I don't understand why it's saying 4841. Um... Hmm, strange. Okay, uh, and actually one other thing I forgot to do is I want to select all of these tracks. I want to have them selected like this because I don't want to go one by one bouncing each of these tracks out. I want um, Ableton to do the hard work for me. And so that's what this selected tracks only function is for here. Under rendered track, you choose selected tracks only, and it's going to go through each and every one of these and bounce them out one by one. Um, okay, well, it insists on choosing this as our start point, so I'm not going to argue with it. Um, uh, you want to make sure that we're, you know, staying in the same sample rate and not doing any sample rate conversion um, because we're going to do that at the end of the mix. And um, we're staying in AIF because that's what you sent me uh, initially. Not that it would really matter at all. I'm um, 24 bits. 
uh, and that's that's all there is. Um, <clears throat> so with selected tracks only um, uh, selected, I can just choose export. Um, I'm going to put it into the stems folder that I created. I may end up moving those, and then you know I think if I just put absolutely nothing in here, nope, it's not going to let me do that. So I'll put just stems underscore, and then it's going to save an audio file for each one of these tracks, stems underscore kick, stems underscore snare, and so on. So I will be back um, doing the same thing with the other project that you sent that contains um, the rest of the music. So I'm over in the other project that you sent where we have the um, rest of your content, and this one was a little trickier to work with um, just due to the way that uh, things were rooted. Um, but uh, let's see, um, I want, here we go. Um, so what I'm doing here is um, same thing as we did with the drums. I just want to isolate the different elements. And for example, uh, if I'm starting with the 303, you know, you have these different elements. You have this like low 303 and these other lead elements. So I'm just doing um, fairly crude stuff here by, you know, soloing the entire 303 group. And then I'm just going to, for now, mute the 303 lead so we only hear... So we only hear the low, the low 303, and I'm going to bounce that out as a separate audio track. And then I'm going to um, probably just bypass this one and isolate this one and bounce it out. And again, it's um, you know starting at exactly the same point, so we're going to record a bunch of silence. And um, in the previous session, when I had this kind of like uh, problem with which um, start point the uh, Ableton uh, export audio video function was choosing to start with. Um, it's really to do with where there is actually an active uh, region of some sort, not where you've set your in and out locator. So what I've done here is I've just created a dummy MIDI region. Um, and I'm going to select that before I do any exporting. And that will set my um, stems in and out points to be the correct place. I'm going to have to be careful when I go into logic, though, because that is going to result in the drums not lining up with the um, rest of the uh, rest of the stems. And that's not what you want with stems. You want all your stems lining up. But um, whatever, I'm going to compensate for that. So yeah, I have this dummy MIDI, uh, this dummy MIDI object here that is sitting on exactly the start point that I wanted. I should have done this in the previous drum session, but never mind. And then I have, you know, I've just soloed the 303 and I've muted the 303 leads that I didn't want. So in this situation, I can't do, you know, selecting a bunch of different tracks and because I haven't taken the time to really um, dissect the project and just like organize it in such a way that I could do this. Um, so I just have to choose master in this case. But I've got my correct render start and render length um, settings. And the rest of this has remained the same. So I can say export. And then um, I'm just going to you know, at least name it the same. So stems underscore 303 low, let's say. And then save. OK, so I'm going to go through and do that for the, three the two separate 303 leads. Um, for the, you know, the hydrosynth fast dub gets its own stem. Um, there's this, these other kind of like chord stabs. I think these two, the one that say wave hits and M12 chord player or chord layer rather, because they kind of feel like the same sound. Um, I will just, I will just bounce those two together as one single stereo stem and that will be fine. Um, and what else is there? I'm pretty sure that you have elected to not use this Juno 6. I don't remember hearing it in the original mix down that you sent. So I'm assuming that this Juno 6 is is um, not to be exported. So I'm going to be doing the 303 and the hydrosynths. And I think that's everything, but we'll see. Probably worth mentioning um, as I bounce out the hydrosynth fast dub. Um, you know, some of the inline insert effects I choose to uh, keep because I consider that to be uh, more of a sound design choice than a mixing choice. So in the case of the hydrosynth fast dub, you've got, um, you've got a noise gate and a sidechain compressor against the kick in this quite extreme 
uh, boost the upper mid high frequencies of the um, uh, of this sort of fast dub uh, stab um, element and I'm I'm not going to remove that I'm going to keep that because I feel that that is like a choice that you made for more of a sound design rather than a mixing choice. Um, so that's why I would leave this on, whereas I would potentially um, <clears throat> uh, bypass any kind of like glue compression. And that would only be, you know, relevant when you're mixing stuff together anyway. So, um, and obviously we're doing the mixing in Logic, so that's kind of not applicable in this case. Um, something else that I've noticed that I'm kind of missing is the convolution reverb that you're using um, in places. Uh, I'm going to have to make an assessment as to how much we're missing or losing by not having that. And um, I'll be trying to sort of insert that sound back in using um, sends um, in Logic, using Logic's convolution reverb, which will sound pretty similar as long as I can find an impulse response that is kind of similar to what, you've, um, what you were using in the first place. Anyway, so you know now I'm going to bounce out this fast dub, same kind of deal. I've just soloed the, the fast dub. Um, track. I renamed this to. Um, I've just hit the solo on this, and you know, I'm just making sure that it sounds correct. And yes, it does. Um, so uh, again, with this dummy clip selected, Command Shift R for render um, or export audio video, and then you know, same deal. Export stems oops. hydra synth whoops hydra synth fast dub that'll do while i was going through bouncing stems i found this part this pink colored one um, which i don't think i heard in the mix down that you initially sent, so I'm assuming isn't supposed to be part of it, but I am going to bounce it out anyway just in case. Um, but again, um, the benefit of you bouncing stems for someone like me would be that, you know, this guesswork is just taken away from me. Um, I'm not even considering a sound that may or may not intended to be used. All right, so here we are over in Logic, and I've done a bunch of housekeeping out of this video so as to not be totally boring. Um, and this is what I've ended up with. Um, all of the stems that we've recorded have been placed in the project uh, at the correct time, remembering that I, I actually got the start point wrong on the drums. Uh, they should have, the, the, the audio file should have started here, um, the same as everything else, so that they would just line up. So that's one obvious and major caveat of making stems is that you want everything to just plop down on this timeline and, and um, play back normally. So um, I've ordered all the tracks so that they're, you know, top down in a sensible order, starting with the kick. And I made the channel a bit bigger so it looks nice and I've colored them. And these are all just visual cues to help me out. And also naming the tracks um, properly here. All of this stuff just kind of helps me when I'm trying to like, um, look at a project and then the output of these ch channels are going to uh, logic auxiliary channels which can just be thought of as like sub mixes it, ableton just you just make another audio track and you tell it to have this type of uh this particular channel for an input and this particular channel for an output well in logic if you want to do something like that you have to make an auxiliary channel and that's what these things are um, that's what all of these things are and so you know, my kick drum is going to an auxiliary channel called kick, which in uh, which is then going to yet another auxiliary channel called kick. I know this sounds kind of stupid, and in some scenarios, kind of like this one, it sort of is a bit dumb. Um, but uh, ultimately, I'm just trying to end up with the smallest number of um, channels to have faders on. I have a controller that has faders, so I can control the volume of um, each channel independently and and it's just like a cascading hierarchy of processing um, going from the you know base of the pyramid to this actually I mean this is this is in the middle this is the very tip this is the very very tip of the pyramid um, but these would be the middle of the pyramid 
these would be very, very close to the tip, and then this is the actual tip of the pyramid. So I suppose I could just do that. Um, so, uh, you know, if I start working on um, the drums at this point, I can simply just solo the drums and the kick gets its own channel because it always should because the kick is the most important element in the whole mix. And that's the thing that you're always going to want to be able to have as absolutely as loud as it could ever need to be. So always a good idea to have that on its own track and have the drums on their own other track. But we have better, more granular levels of control over here, um, uh, which we're going to play with in a moment. And then, you know, same with the 303. I have just a, one dedicated track for all the 303 elements. Um, but preceding it, we have these two divisions of the 303 elements. This one, 303 low, is the, the most prominent, um, very low, low frequency or low mid frequency dominant 303 line. It's basically the bass line, even though it's not particularly bassy. So the kick drum will be what really provides the bass. Um, but this is sort of the next most crucial element and should definitely have its own um, final submix channel. Uh, although, sorry, I have to kind of contradict myself because the 303 high elements do feed into that final 303 track, but together, taken together as one holistic whole, the 303 is obviously like the main event um, with the kick. You know, it's really the, the part of the pairing of those two. Um, and then, so the hydrosyn stuff gets their own two separate channels. So I can process these channels um, with various compression and EQ and stuff like that. Uh, so at this point, I think I'm gonna stop talking, just work and um, kind of like explain what I did after. <laughs> 